Welcome in the precious name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us for the service of the 10th of May 2020 and uh, this is Mother's Day, second Sunday in May. I'd like to mention also uh, someone's special day today and that is Sophia. She turns three today and we wish you a very happy birthday Sophia. Hope you have a wonderful day and uh, many blessings. <clears throat> I've posted announcements on the WhatsApp uh, app for you to read and please do read them. Please pray for our missionaries and please pray uh, for their needs as they minister in faraway countries. <clears throat> if you would now turn with me in your Bibles to Psalm 4. Psalm 4. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? Selah. But know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with him <clears throat> with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Selah. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. I will both lay me down in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me to dwell in safety. In safety. May the Lord richly bless the reading of his word this morning. Let's pray. Our loving God and Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this time. We thank you and praise you for your word. And Lord, we pray that as we look into your word this morning, that you would bless us, that you would guide us and direct us. And Lord God, that we would be obedient to your word. Father, we pray that you would help us to understand what you are trying to teach us this day and to put it into practice in our lives. In Jesus' most precious and worthy name. Amen. <clears throat> As I mentioned already, it's Mother's Day today. And this morning we're going to look at honouring mothers. Oftentimes we look at a uh, character in the Bible and see how wonderful they are. And, and uh, oftentimes ladies will try and measure up to those, and, and, uh, which is a good thing. But uh, sometimes there's that guilt there. But today we're going to be looking at honouring mothers, honouring our parents. <clears throat> and Mother's Day is a day when we honour our mothers. Mother's Day started back in the 1800s, early 1900s. <clears throat> Anna Jarvis uh, first suggested that there would be a national observance of an annual day honouring all mothers because she had loved her own mother so much. At a memorial service for a mother on May 10, 1908, Miss Jarvis gave a carnation, her mother's favourite flower, to each person who attended. Within the next few years, the idea of a day of honour uh, for mothers gained popularity and Mother's Day was, a, was observed in a number of large cities in the US. On May 9, 1914, an Act of Congress was passed and uh, presented by President Woodrow Wilson and he proclaimed the second Sunday in May as Mother's Day. And it is a good thing to sit back and to remember the influence that our mothers had or have on our lives. It's a very good thing of the influence. And as I thought back, there were not just my mum, but there were others that had a great influence, other women that had a great influence in my life. I think of aunties and great aunties that had some influence. My grandmothers who had a great influence and just in their lives and the way that they lived and the way that they loved. <clears throat> my mother-in-law had a big influence in my life. In fact, had uh, to do with my own salvation. Uh, 
uh, the, the presenting of the gospel in different ways in her home uh, with my father-in-law. Other godly older Christian women when I was a, a younger Christian who uh, <clears throat> would say certain things and they would be uh, reflected in my life. But I want to especially thank my mother uh, for and honour her for the things that she did for me and for the influence that she had in my life and also the, the lives of uh, my children, her grandchildren, her great-grandchildren now. And so what a blessing that is. I'd also like to honour my wife as uh, she is a mother and thank her for the influence that she has uh, in, her, uh, in the lives of her children, our children and our grandchildren now. Uh, and it's beautiful to see uh, the way that she conducts herself with the grandchildren and, and just shows her love to them. It's a blessing to see. And what a wonderful thing it is. We have our son and daughter-in-law uh, staying with us for a, for a time and uh, their, uh, their little daughter, our granddaughter, is staying with us and to see um, uh, my, grand, my uh, daughter-in-law loving my granddaughter the way that she does. It's a, a wonderful blessing. And uh, I'm sure that that little girl is going to grow up uh, acknowledging the fact that her mother really loved her. And God in the Bible honoured godly women. Women, mothers in the Bible. Two books were written about women, Esther and Ruth. We know that Ruth definitely was a mother. And uh, Ruth was called a virtuous woman. In Ruth chapter 3 and verse 11 it says, And now, my daughter, fear not, I will do thee all that thou requirest, for all the city of my people doth know that thou art a virtuous woman. This was saying a lot. This Ruth was a Moabite woman, not a Jewish woman. And all the city of Bethlehem acknowledged her as being virtuous. Someone who was strong, someone who was um, <clears throat> a person of valour, someone who was a person of great character. And uh, she was acknowledged as that. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 12 and verse 4, it says that a virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is a rottenness in his bones. I am sure that Ruth was such a wonderful uh, wife or her husband Boaz in the Bible, <coughs> Bible times that uh, he, she was a crown to her husband. Proverbs 31 verse 10, Who can find a virtuous woman for her price is far above rubies. And uh, when you have a wonderful wife, you realise that that is a true statement. In the Bible, God acknowledges good kings and bad kings, and he acknowledges the mothers of good kings and uh, shames those of uh, bad kings. <clears throat> Jehoshaphat, uh, his mother's name was Azuba, the daughter of Shelah. <clears throat> And uh, he was a good king. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And there were a number of other kings that they mentioned their mother. And there were bad kings. Uh, of course, Solomon did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Why was that? It was because in 1 Kings 11 and verse 5, Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of of the Ammonites. Why? Because he had married these <coughs> Gentile women and they became an influence on him, a bad influence on him in his life. There is wives. But those wives became the mothers of his children. In 1 Kings 14 and 21, uh, after Solomon had died, Rehoboam became king. And Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, and his mother's name was Naaman, at Nama and Ammonites, and she encouraged him to follow after the gods of her fathers, the gods of her people, uh, as mentioned here, the abomination of the Ammonites, Milcom. <coughs> then we have in Second Chronicles, chapter twenty-two and verse twenty-two, Isaiah, when he began to reign, his mother's name, and we see that his mother's name mentioned in that verse was. Uh, Athaliah, uh, the daughter of Omri. And uh, <clears throat> we see that uh, she encouraged him to be evil in the sight of the Lord and follow after the, uh, the northern kingdom uh, because 
Omri was the king of the northern kingdom and followed after uh, the things of uh, the wickedness of, of, of those up there. Uh, in 2 Chronicles chapter 22 and verse 10, uh, this mother of <coughs> Isaiah saw that her son was dead and she arose and destroyed all the seed royal of the house of Judah. What a wicked woman she was. She killed all those uh, young men and, and, and some babies, uh, but she missed one. Praise God. God preserved the seed. The rest of the story goes that Jehoshabeth, the daughter of the king, uh, took Joash, the son of Uzziah, the, and stole him from the king's sons that were slain, and put him and his nurse in the bedchamber. So Jehoshabeth, Be the daughter of King Joram, the wife of Jehoiada, for she was the sister of ah Ahaziah, uh, hid him from Athaliah, uh, so that she slew him not. And he was with them, hid in the house of God six years. And Athaliah reigned over the land. But God restored the kingdom later on to Joash, despite his mother. And despite his mother, he was a good king. And we can only put this down to the influence of a godly woman, Jehoshabeth, and her husband, Jehoiada, the priest. Here's a side note. Young men, be careful who you marry, because they will be the mother of your children. How do you want your children raised? How do you want them to, uh, to act? What do you want them to believe? What do you want them to follow? Who do you want them to follow? You see, we need to be careful. Young ladies, the same thing. When you are searching for a man, what sort of man do you want to be the father of your children? <clears throat> so we see here that God honoured those that were godly women and he wrote about those and uh, showed the, the wickedness of, of ungodly women and the way that they drew people in the wrong direction. But you know, for our mothers, we need to honour them, not just on one day. One day is not enough. You see, we are commanded to honour our fathers and our mothers every day. And we're going to look at why we should do that. first reason <clears throat> why we should honour our mothers is that God created motherhood. God created mothers. And we look back in Genesis <clears throat> chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. We see the creation of uh, Eve when uh, God took a rib from Adam and, and fashioned it and made, made Eve. And verse 24 it says, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. <clears throat> you see, <clears throat> God, the first mention of the word mother is here in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. And uh, motherhood was established back at creation. Motherhood was established by God. And when we look at the uh, meaning of it, the strongest meaning of the word mother, uh, it, has, uh, it means mother uh, both for uh, uh, people and for animals. And we see that the uh, ki different kinds of animals had uh, offspring <coughs> or after their own kind. Uh, and it has that wide sense of, of being a mother. But it also has the sense of being the bond of the family. And mothers indeed are that. But it also has the idea of parting as well. And when we think of it, when a mother gives birth, the baby parts and um, <clears throat> parts from the womb and comes out into the world. And uh, later on, as the baby grows up and becomes more dependent, that it will uh, part from the mother and the mother's care. Uh, another lexicon that had the definition, mother, humans, of animals, but also the point of departure or the point of division. Uh, and again, having that idea. So we see that motherhood was established by God back in creation. And so there is a reason why uh, we should respect and honour our mothers. Motherhood was re recognised back then at creation by the first man. 
in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20, Genesis chapter 3 and verse 20, we see, And Adam called his wife Eve because she was the mother of all living. And as we know that we are the descendants of Adam and Eve, every one of us. We are from that same, same line. And uh, so motherhood was recognized by the first man. She was the mother of all living. Motherhood was confirmed in her bringing forth and raising offspring. Cain, Abel, Seth, and then we read later, many sons and daughters <clears throat> that were begotten of Adam and Eve. And motherhood is stabilized in marriage. We see it there in Genesis chapter 2 and verse 24. We've already read that. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. There we have that leaving again, leaving from that point of departure and joining together as it were uh, as a new family unit. Uh, the mother and the father again being united in marriage. And God takes very, very seriously <coughs> the honouring of mothers and fathers. <coughs> in Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 18 we read, Deuteronomy 21 and verse 18 if a man have a stubborn and rebellious son which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother and that when they have chastened him will not hearken unto them then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him out under the elders of the city and under the gate of his place. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, This our son is stubborn and rebellious. He will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. And all the men of the city shall stone him with stones, that he die. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, that all Israel shall hear and fear. We don't think of not honouring or dishonouring our parents, dishonouring our mothers, as being evil. But it is evil. God says to put evil away from among you. It's an evil thing. God takes seriously the honouring of our mothers and our fathers. So God created motherhood. God created mothers. <clears throat> and God wants us to honour them. So much so, so that our second point is that God commanded us to honour them. In Exodus chapter 20 and verse 12, one of the Ten Commandments says, Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. He reinforces this and states it again in Deuteronomy chapter 5 and verse 16. Honour thy father and thy mother, <clears throat> as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days may be prolonged, and that it might go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Why would God need to command this? <clears throat> because men, that means men, women, children, boys and girls, are full of pride. <clears throat> men, women, boys and girls are full of their own importance. And we tend, I'm one of those, we tend to treat, <coughs> um, uh, we don't tend to treat these rules, these commandments, especially this one, as seriously as we should in this country. We forget that it's one of the ten commandments that was given by God. And we tend to justify this sin and make it, oh, not so bad. But is that right? You see, Jesus, when he was on earth, spoke of this sin and the justifying of it. In Matthew chapter 15 and verse 4, Jesus said, For God commanded, saying, Honour thy father and the mother, and he that curseth mother, a father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, Whosoever shall say to his father or his mother, It is a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, 
and honour not his father or his mother, he shall be free. Thus have ye made the commandment of God of none effect by your tradition. You see, they've justified what they have done wrong. You know, I think that what brought this really home to me one day was Helen and I were talking to a Buddhist man and we were trying to witness to him and we were talking about sin and he said that we believe the same thing. And I think he had a real grasp on this idea of honouring your father and your mother. You see, <clears throat> he said, yes, like bad crimes, like not obeying or not honouring your father and your mother, it is a crime. He used the word crime. And he could have used any number of sins, but he used this one of honouring father and mother as being a really bad sin and we should see it as that because when we look into the scriptures and we look at the context of the scriptures about honoring our fathers and our mothers then we see that it is a crime against God we see that it is a crime against <clears throat> our parents it is a sin and a grievous one if you would turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 21 Exodus chapter 21 and verse 12 Exodus 21 and verse 12. <clears throat> and the word of God says, He that smiteth a man so that he <clears throat> die shall surely be put to death. And if a man lie not in wait, but God deliver him into his hand, then I will appoint thee a place whither he shall flee. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbour to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from mine altar that he may die and he that smiteth his father or his mother shall be surely put to death <clears throat> and he that stealeth a man and selleth him or if he be found in his hand he shall surely be put to death and he that curseth his father or mother shall surely be put to death you see <clears throat> this sin of not honoring the smiting or cursing father or mother is associated with murder and slaying and man stealing. You see, when we think and we ask ourselves the question, should we kill somebody? Should we steal somebody away and, you, and, and make them our servant or make them our slave? We would say, no way, no way. You know, we should say the same thing about honoring our father and our mother. You see, this word smite <coughs> means light or hard. It does imply also beating and bring, causing death by, by hitting. But you know, when Jesus was on earth and he spoke of being angry at somebody, he talked about the fact that that was as bad as killing somebody. And so if we raise a hand to our parents in anger, it is just like killing them and so this smiting no wonder God has a, a dim view of it he has a very very uh, dim view of it and then we go on to curseth this word curse means to to curse to say bad things about to afflict to bring into contempt or to lightly esteem and so we see that these words here <clears throat> um, show us that we should honor our father and our mother that God would desire us not to do that it carries the death penalty for doing those things very serious Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 1 the word of God says and the Lord spake unto Moses saying speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel and say unto them ye shall be holy for I the Lord your God am holy <clears throat> ye shall fear every man his mother and his father and keep my sabbaths I am the Lord your God turn ye not unto idols nor make yourselves molten gods for I the Lord I am the Lord your God and if ye offer a sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord ye shall offer it at your own will God desires us to be holy because he is holy he does not want us to make idols he wants us to keep the Lord's day 
And if we said, should we make idols or should we not keep the Lord's day, we would say as believers, no way, that's not right. Uh, <clears throat> we should say the same thing about the fear of our father and our mother. This word fear means to revere, uh, to be afraid, but to stand in awe, to honour and respect. And that's what we need to have for our parents and our mothers. Do we realise, honestly, the sacrifice that our parents make to raise us? When we have our own children, we start to realise that sacrifice that they make. And we need to realise that um, <clears throat> they sacrifice much to provide and to protect and to comfort. And so we need to honour them, we need to stand in awe, we need to respect them because they are our parents and God has given us our parents. God doesn't make mistakes. God is a good God and God uses our parents to mould us into the people that he wants us to be. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 7, we go on and it says, Sanctify yourselves therefore and be ye holy for I am the Lord your God. And ye shall keep my statutes and do them. I, the Lord, which sanctify you. For every one that curseth his father or his mother shall surely be put to death. He that curseth his mother, father or his mother, his blood shall be upon him. And the man that committeth adultery with another man's wife, even he that committeth adultery with his neighbor's wife, the adulterer and the adulteress shall surely be put to death. God desires us to be sanctified. God desires us to be set apart to him. God desires us to be holy. You know, here, honouring mother and father is associated with now adultery. And if we said, should we commit adultery, we would again say, no way. No way. We need to realise that this sin of honouring, uh, not honouring our mother and our father is an extremely serious thing. We go on to the New Testament and if we look in Romans chapter 1, <clears throat> turn with me to Romans chapter 1, Romans chapter 1 and verse 26 and the Word of God says, For this cause God gave them up unto vile affections, for even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust one toward another. Men with men working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, <coughs> uh, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. You see, what sins not obeying our parents, uh, our mothers, uh, carries uh, with them, associated with these wicked sins, uh, and we say, would we do those sins? Should we do those sins? We say, no way. And so it should be the same with disobeying our parents and dishonouring them. The third point that <clears throat> we uh, need to look at is that God curses those who do not honour their parents, do not honour their mothers or their fathers. In Deuteronomy chapter 27 and verse 14, it says, and the Levite shall speak and say unto all the men of Israel with a loud voice, Cursed be the man that maketh any graven or molten image, an abomination unto the Lord, the work of the hands of the craftsman, and putteth it in a secret place. And all the people shall answer and say, Amen. 
Cursed be he that setteth light by his father or his mother, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that removeth his neighbour's landmark, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that maketh the blind to wander out of the way, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that per perverteth the judgment of strangers, fatherless, and widow, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with his father's wife, because he uncovereth his father's skirt, and all the people shall say, Amen. Cursed be he that lieth with any manner of beast, and all the people shall say, Amen. You see, all those other sins we gladly acknowledge that they are wrong and we say amen but we need to realize that setting at light father or mother is also one of these grievous sins and god brings a curse you see this bringing uh, or setteth light by his father or mother means to secretly despise in his heart gestures mocks you know the teenager roll of the eyes that's what it means those things inside the heart where they curse inside the heart and they reject the discipline of their father or their mother <clears throat> that is uh, being <clears throat> that is being setting at light father and mother we see god brings a curse on those who do not honor their mo our mothers and fathers <clears throat> fourthly i'd like to look at the fact that God not only curses dishonoring, but he blesses honoring. You see, God confers a blessing upon those that honor their mother and father. In Exodus 20 and verse 12, we read this earlier. One of the commandments, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Here's a promise of God, a blessing that our days will be long on the land if we honour our father and our mother. Deuteronomy 5.16, we read also, Honour thy father and thy mother as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee, that thy days be prolonged, and that it might go well with thee in the land which the Lord thy, Lord, the Lord thy God giveth thee. God wants to bless us, and we will be blessed when we honour our father and our mother. <coughs> Fifthly, God clarifies honouring father and mother in the wisdom of the Proverbs. And we need to ask ourselves, are we wise or are we a reproach or a shame to our parents? Thomas Carlyle said, show me the man you honour and I will know what kind of man you are. Uh, show me the man that honours his father and his mother and I will know the kind of man you are. That's uh, rearranging that quote. You know, if we do honour our father and mother, it shows us what type of man we are, whether we're uh, foolish, a reproach, a shame, or whether we're wise. In Proverbs 1 and verse 8, it says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. In Proverbs 6 and verse 20, my son, keep, the, keep thy father's commandment and forsake, forsake not the law of thy mother. Proverbs 10.1 The Proverbs of Solomon A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish son is a heaviness to his mother. Proverbs 15 and verse 20 A wise son maketh a glad father, but a foolish man despiseth his mother. You see here, the wisdom of the Proverbs tells us that to follow the instruction of the father and the mother is a wise thing. But it's foolishness to despise them or not to follow that instruction, the godly instruction. Proverbs 23 and verse 22 to 25, it says, Hearken unto thy father that begat thee, and despise not thy mother when she is old. Buy the truth and sell it not. Also wisdom and instruction and understanding. The father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And he that begetteth a wise child shall have joy of him. 
the father and thy mother shall be glad and she that bear thee shall rejoice we need to have parents that are glad we need to have parents that are rejoicing because we are wise and that we honor them in proverbs 29 and verse 15 the parents have a responsibility to correct their children it says the rod and reproof give wisdom but a child left to himself bringeth his mother to shame oftentimes we don't like to uh, be disciplined we don't like to be corrected in fact in the book of hebrews it tells us that it's not pleasant to be uh, disciplined uh, but it's a necessary thing because our parents want to bring us to be the best that we can be they can see in us things that we can't often see and we need to honor that even in discipline we need to make sure that we do not reject that that we need to acknowledge hey what they're trying to do is they're trying to do the best for me proverbs 19 and verse 26 says he that wasteth his father and chaseth away his mother is a son that causeth shame and bringeth reproach you see rejecting the mother and father and the, the way that they go in fact god looks very dimly on it in the wisdom of proverbs proverbs 20 20 whoso curseth his father or his mother his lamp shall be put out in the obscure darkness proverbs 28 and 24 whoso robbeth his father or his mother and saith it is no transgression the same is the companion of a destroyer again making light of not honoring their fa father and mother is is a wicked thing <clears throat> every day every day should be a day to honor our mothers and our fathers now, this is a, an extra special day to bring honor and verbalize and show by our actions that we honor and respect and love them but we need to do it every day and i want to say personally that growing up there were times probably many times that i did not honor my father and my mother and god brought me into conviction about that and so I went and asked for their forgiveness at one time and I encourage you that if you in the past have not honored your father and your mother that you make right with that today it is a day to do that to go and ask their forgiveness and to ask God's forgiveness too that's an important part of this and to reject that and to go on and be honoring to your father and to your mother especially your mother I want to put this very plainly it is a grievous sin if we dishonor our mother and our father a grievous sin it is something that we really need to get a grip on and see that this is not just any ordinary sin it is one of the one of the most wicked things that we can do and uh, we need to see that as evil in our lives another thing that I'd like to close with is that we should treat our mums and our dads our mothers and our fathers the same way that we want to be treated in the future by our children how would we want our children to treat us how would we want our children to look up to us one of Grimm's fairy tales says this once there was a little old man his eyes blinked and his hands trembled when he ate he clattered the silverware distressingly missed his mouth with the spoon as often as not and dribbled a bit of his food on the tablecloth now he lived with his married son having nowhere else to live and his son's wife didn't like the arrangement I can't have this she said it interferes with my right to happiness so she and her husband took the old man and gently but firmly by the arm and led him to the corner of the kitchen there they sat him on a stool and gave him his food in an earthenware bowl from then on he always ate in the corner blinking at the table with wistful eyes one day his hands trembled rather more than usual and the earthenware bowl fell and broke 
If you're a pig, said the daughter-in-law, you must eat out of a trough. So they made him a little wooden trough, and he got his meals in that. These people had a four-year-old son of whom they were very fond. One evening the man noticed his boy playing intently with some bits of wood and asked what he was doing. I'm making a trough, he said, smiling for approval, to feed you and Mama out of when I get big. The man and his wife looked at each other for a while and didn't say anything. Then they cried a little. They then went to the corner, took the old man by the arm and led him back to the table. They sat him in a comfortable chair and gave him his food on a plate. And from then on, nobody ever scolded when he clattered or spilled or broke things. We need to honour our father and our mother, and especially today, honour our mothers. I encourage you to give them a call. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them how much uh, they mean to you. and. Uh, appreciate what they've done and maybe some of the other ladies in your life that have been a blessing to you over the years uh, maybe some family members or others that have been a blessing and just tell them that God has used them in your life uh, to make you the person that you are today I want to pray now loving God and Heavenly Father we thank you and praise you for your goodness we thank you and praise you that uh, we can be blessed by your word Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you that we can be blessed by following your word. Help us, Lord, to honour our mothers and our fathers. Help us, Lord, to be a blessing to them. Lord, I pray that you would help us to be wise. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. In closing, I'd just like to read a couple of verses from our hymn in our book. It's called A Christian Home. It's hymn number 471 in the book. O oh, give us homes built firm upon the Saviour, where Christ is head and counsellor and guide, where every child is taught, we, taught his love and favour and gives his heart to Christ the crucified. How sweet to know that though his footsteps waver, his faithful Lord is walking by his side. O oh, give us homes with godly fathers, mothers, who always place their hope and trust in him, whose tender patience turmoil never bothers, whose calm and courage trouble cannot dim, a home where each finds joy in serving others, and love still shines, though, day, though days be dark and grim. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for the blessing of sharing God's word to you this day. And we pray that you will have a blessing this Mother's Day. Amen.